Look at that spin of the drumstick. Hey, oh, Mike here. Welcome to my channel. So, this is going to be a GH6 centric video all about my settings that I'm using for video on this camera. I've had this camera for about two months now and I'm starting to get really familiar with it and get all my custom menus set up and my custom buttons dialed in. So let me run through what I've done with this camera. So to start with here, my big head and I are gonna run through the custom modes that I have set up on the camera. And then after that, I'm gonna run through what I have the custom buttons set up for. So let's get right into it. So the camera is set up a little bit funny in the way that the custom options show up. There's four custom modes on top of the dial, but the fourth custom mode has up to 10 slots within that custom mode. So it ends up being a total of 13 custom modes. I'm not using them all. I'm using a total of nine custom modes right now. And then I just keep adding as I go as I need more. But I'll just run through what I have set up right now in my camera. So in this first slot, C1, I have that set up to be my 24 frames a second open gate. So that's my content creation profile. I can chop that to 16 by nine or nine by 16, go vertical. You just have more space to work with with its four by three aspect ratio. I love that mode and I'm using it probably 50% of the time while I'm using this camera. So moving on to the second slot, C2, I'm using the 60 frames a second. Everyone needs a good 4K 60 in their profile. Uh, in case you want to slow down that footage a little bit. And so for this mode, I actually started, uh, when I got the camera, I started it by using the open gate 60 frames a second, but I uh, realized quite quickly that I didn't want that extra crop that that has on it on the pixel to pixel mode. Uh, and so I've switched to uh, using the 60 frames a second. I use a C4K60, the 422 10-bit option, all intra, but I'm using uh, the L, the lower quality, not the higher quality. That's 800 megs a second versus 600 megs a second. I'm using 600. Uh, I generally don't need that extra 800, but if I was working doing more client shoots, I might bump it up to that extra 800 if I'm not using ProRes. Uh, we'll get to that in the future. So this is my 60 frames a second profile. Moving on, the best thing about this camera is the high frame rate options. My option C3 customization slot is gonna be my 120 frames a second mode. Man, I love this mode. It's, it's 4K crisp as a bunny. It's exactly what I was hoping for with the GH5 120 frames a second options, uh, but having that in 4K full vlog profile, it's it's just it's a dream, and uh, I love it so much. I love filming my kids, slowing it down for them, and we just enjoy sitting around the TV and watching all this slow mo footage of the hair going bonkers and uh, your facial expressions going funny when you land and all that good stuff. So. 120 frames a second is my C3 profile. So that brings us to uh, the C4 slots. So there's going to be six different options within C4 now uh, that I'll run through with you. So my first two slots are going to be my anamorphic modes. I have uh, the Suray 35 mil 1.33 uh, anamorphic lens. Uh, and so when I'm using that, I have the first two slots set up for that. So the first one is going to be the 24 frames a second. The second slot is going to be the 120 frames a second. Within these custom settings, I have the quick options, the fast buttons uh, set up differently because it's a manual lens. Uh, 120 doesn't allow dynamic range boost on this camera. So I just had to change some of the way the custom buttons work in the anamorphic modes, which I'll run through after I'm finished the custom modes here. So moving on from the anamorphic modes, I have for my C3 and C4 modes, I have those set up to be my ProRes options. I have 24 frames a second and 60 frames a second. And, and there is an option on this camera to do high quality ProRes, but I'm choosing to use just the regular ProRes just to save some data. And honestly, it's, it's, tons of data coming in those ProRes files. 
And the side note about these ProRes is I've actually uh, grown to really love these ProRes just for the speed of editing that they give me. My computer's not so great, and just having the ProRes all intra codecs that are so friendly to the machines, it's a lot of data up front, but on the back end, it saves so much time editing with these ProRes files. Uh, and then if you're gonna do VFX work on top of that, these are the profiles you wanna use. I've been having a lot of fun using the ProRes files on this camera. And you know, generally when I make these videos, I'm deleting, uh, the raw files when I'm done the video anyways. I don't, I'm only keeping B-roll files basically if I'm keeping anything of my own work. So moving on from the ProRes files, my C-5 slot is going to be my high, high frame rate option, variable frame rate, but I'm using the 240 on this. Uh, it's, it's just in HD. I have actually not even used it on this camera yet takes a very specific action to require 240 frames a second. But you know what? It's on there and I can't wait till I use it. And then finally, slot C6 is going to be an option that I just came up with the other day when I was filming the kids down at the creek. I didn't have a mic on my camera, so I have that set up to be the open gate option, but I have it the, the mic uh, adjustment set up differently so that I have the gain turned up a bit more so that I can hear more stuff coming from the actual in-body microphone. Okay, so that's gonna about do it for my custom mode dial. Now let's get into the customized buttons. And once again, I'm sorry about the close-up of my face. I just don't have a better way to do this without being able to capture the screen. And I don't have the ability to do that at this moment. Okay, so, uh, let's start with the buttons that don't change regardless of the profile that I'm using and then I'll show you the different customizations I have for various profiles that do change because of restrictions that this camera has for, for instance, using 120 frames a second, I no longer have access to dynamic range boost, so there's not much point having that as a quick button on the camera. But for all the other profiles, I like to have that so I can turn that on and off as a toggle. So. Uh, let's start with the four buttons I have on my dial here. So if you didn't know that this dial is set up into four quadrants, up, down, left, right, and they each have a button associated with them. So the first one on the left is going to be my waveform. Such a valuable tool for uh, setting your exposure. Uh, it's the one that I use the most for setting exposure. Uh, my right button is going to be the other exposure tool I use the most, and that's going to be my luminance spot meter. You just put this little spot over whatever you're exposing, somebody's face, a gray card, whatever it is, set that exposure, you're good to go. Uh, there's really no excuses with this camera not to set perfect exposure. Uh, my up button. So this one took me a while to figure out what to use here. Right now I'm using what's called Enlarge Live Display, and this is just a video-centric mode. All of these settings are just for video because I'm mostly a video shooter with this camera. And so what that does is just enlarge the area that it's looking at so that I can check focus while I'm recording. I have that on the up button because it's the intuitive way I push up I zoom into the screen and that's why I have that set the way it is. And that leads me to the down button, which I have that set to be my, uh, my various crops that I'll be using in the different formats that I use. And they do change. Typically I have it set up to be a vertical crop so that I can see what a shot's gonna look like in vertical format as well as the regular 16 by nine, 17 by nine format that it's using. That does change sometimes if I'm using say an anamorphic mode, sometimes I wanna see what just a 16 by nine crop will use uh, against an ultra wide view angle, which is what you would get with the 1.33 D-squeeze image of an anamorphic lens. So moving on to the front two buttons that I have here. So for all the modes except for 120 frame a second modes, I have the bottom button set to dynamic range boost on and off. I find that really handy to use actually, uh, just in terms of uh, when you're out in the field, you turn on dynamic range boost and it's gonna kick your ISO way up to 2000 if you're using Vlog or 800 if you're using other profiles. And you know, typically that's not great during the day. 
but I found that if I'm shooting in the evening, it's actually a kind of a really great toggle to have just to kick your ISO up and it actually sets the exposure pretty well for shooting at night already. So that's a kind of a nice feature and that's why I like to have that there. So moving on to the top button here, I have that set to IS boost mode. Uh, so if you're not familiar with uh, Panasonic cameras, IS boost mode is what puts this into similar to tripod mode on a drone. It, it lets you get these shots that are really stable, but you don't want to be moving the camera around in it. And so you'll see that target toggling between uh, just regular image stabilization mode and that's the IS boost mode with the square around that. You got to keep an eye on that though because you don't want to have that on IS boost mode if you are moving the camera around or it gets a little bit jittery. So then you just want to push it back to regular IS boost mode. It might look different on your camera. I'm using a Panasonic lens that has stabilization so I'm getting a dual stabilization on this. Um, but that's what I generally have that top button set for, except for in the anamorphic modes because it has its own stabilization, anamorphic stabilization in 1.33 squeeze. I actually have the top button set to turn off stabilization altogether uh, because that's if I'm going to mount this camera on a tripod, I want to turn off all stabilization because there is a little bit of a crop with the e-stabilization that comes with this camera. So if I'm on a tripod, I don't need it to be stabilized. I just turn it right off. Uh, and that's a really nice button to have in anamorphic modes. Okay, and so lastly, as I alluded to, if I'm using 120 frames a second, I don't need IS boost mode as a quick button on this because it doesn't work for uh, high frame rates, uh, higher than 120 frames a second. So I have that actually set to my volume gain. Uh, that's what I've kind of fallen on. I'm still kind of experimenting with that. You know, this is, these are a work in progress. We're, we're molding the clay, we're sculpting it. And so these are just the, op the buttons that I've come up with so far. So that's gonna about do it for my GH6 settings and customization options. Uh, if you have any other comments you'd like to add, throw them in the comments. If you have other video ideas you'd like to see me do with this camera or other things in general, storytelling, whatever it is, throw it down there. Let's be friends. I read all of those comments. There's not that many of them, so it's not that hard. Uh, but reach out if you're game, and until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.